The next thing I would do if you really want to elevate the design, um, I would work on trying to get a light on this top peak here. Um, I think that would look really good. It's actually pretty easy to do. We have these gutter mounts um, that you can actually just fit right in your gutter and mount that light right in there. And then what you could do is you could actually get that on the second story and it's actually pretty easy to get up there. Um, you can usually you can just make your connection down to the ground here and then run your wire up the uh, downspout either just behind it or right inside of it um, across the gutter put your bracket in and then mount that light so it catches a second story peak and that's something that a lot of um, people who don't do a lot of lighting even a lot of uh, lighting installers won't go to the effort to do that but it really makes um, everything stand out so i would do that um, and that would just be with one of those standard up lights again Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this video with some more great landscape lighting tips. To learn more about landscape lighting, go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca or if you want to see what a real quality landscape light should look like, go and check out our Try It Before You Buy It offer where you can get a premium quality fixture at a discounted rate with your very own battery pack so you can go and test out how that light's going to look and feel what a real premium quality light should look like. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or go watch more videos on YouTube just by searching for The Lighting Doctor. Hi, Mario and Brenda. Uh, thanks for your pictures here. Yeah, I'll, I'd love to show you a couple ideas and stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, it's funny that contractors, the way they operate sometimes, you shouldn't have to come sign a contract before you even uh, come up with a plan that uh, doesn't show a lot of faith that they're um, that they're convinced in their work. If they do a good job and give you a good estimate, then um, most people should want to go with them. So, um, but anyway, I'll give you some good ideas uh, that I like. I really like the brickwork and stuff that you have on your house. So I definitely want to focus um, on some different areas there a little bit of the shrubs and the walkways and stuff too so first thing i would do is um primarily i would use a lot of accent lights to accent the front of the house just a a typical up light like this guy here and the real key with that is um sorry just there's a million pictures here so i'm trying to get the right one um is you want to get that fairly close to the house kind of more to the base maybe 12 18 inches back and having that shine more upright and the angle is going to help get that peak and it's really going to bring out the subtleties in the brickwork so what i would do across the front of the house i would kind of have four of those on both sides of the windows here and both sides of the windows here so it backlights and highlights the nice brickwork and then you get the silhouettes of the plants in front um, i would do the same thing i'm just trying to go to some pictures on this side here um, I would probably do the same thing over here. Even though there's less brickwork on the side, you definitely want to get some light up here. Um, if you put one light, I feel like it's not going to be quite enough. So I think you probably want to have two of those um, at the base of the window here shining up. And one of the questions I always get asked with that is, oh, is it going to be too much light in the window? Um, but the real key and, and what I see a lot of uh, landscapers and stuff do a mistake of is they try and bring the light too far back and shine it at an object. Um, where it creates a lot flatter light whereas if you can get it closer and have it shine more upright that's where it kind of brings out the subtleties and washes that stonework that you have there um, and then there's less chance of it um, shining into the window you're still going to get some side effect but it's usually not enough that it makes a difference so I would have those two um, that cover the window area here and then on this side I would do the same thing the only thing I would say is that uh, you probably want to use something a little bit brighter than a standard up light so um, these come with a four watt uh, LED lamp in them um, but you probably want to upgrade that to a five watt LED lamp which is uh, what we call a 35 watt equivalent um, lamp so 35 watt equivalent halogen lamp um, but then what it does is it's going to do a better job of pushing that light um, further up to the uh, upper peaks of this house so I would do the same thing I kind of did over here and over here where I have I would probably try and put two of them, same thing, kind of just at the corners of the windows here. Again, just so that angle is kind of getting to the top uh, as much as possible. If you just have one here, you could have a bit of a um, dark spot, shadow spot here. Whereas if you have two of them, you know you're going to cover most of this area. And then if it's possible here, I would also try and get two of those lights kind of at the base of these stone columns um, by the front entryway. It really helps make that pop. The only thing I would say about these ones is the other thing that you want to add to that is something called a hex baffle and what a hex baffle is it's just a little glare shield that goes over the lens so at any time you have a fixture that is a little closer to a walking area like that that's shining up it just helps deflect the glare so it's not shining in your eyes so 
that's kind of how I would handle the front of that. And then the next thing I would do, if you really want to elevate the design, um, I would work on trying to get a light on this top peak here. Um, I think that would look really good. It's actually pretty easy to do. We have these gutter mounts um, that you can actually just fit right in your gutter and mount that light right in there. And then what you could do is you could actually get that on the second story. And it's actually pretty easy to get up there. Um, you can usually you can just make your connection down to the ground here and then run your wire up the uh, downspout, either just behind it or right inside of it, um, across the gutter, put your bracket in, and then mount that light so it catches a second story peak. And that's something that a lot of um, people who don't do a lot of lighting, even a lot of uh, lighting installers won't go to the effort to do that, but it really makes um, everything stand out. So I would do that. Um, and that would just be with one of those standard up lights again. Um, just kind of going to the, some of the other areas here. I mean, I would definitely try and get a um, it, one, if not two, um, just because this is a wider angle um, bush you could do one of two things uh, because it's such a feature and, and key area right in the front here I would probably tend to have like two up lights on it um, but another good option for that would be using a wash light like this guy um, not quite as bright not quite as intense a bit of a wider angle lens and it would do a really nice job of highlighting that um, that tree and this kind of island area in the front. And by having two, you're gonna get a little bit more light, um, which is gonna give you a little more reflective light back down below here, which is nice as well. Um, on the front of the house on these areas, so there's a couple ways you can kind of do the front here. I mean, I'm more prone to using up lights as opposed to path and garden lights, but that being said, you do have a walkway here that it would be nice to have a nice balance between some up lights and then some down lights. So what I would typically do is um, typically choose a style of path light. Um, I think you could go with either of these. Obviously, these ones are more expensive, but it is kind of that modern look that more people are, are looking for. And as a matter of fact, I think we're actually sold out of these right now. But, um, but either one of these is good. Uh, these ones are a little brighter, spread a little bit further light. But I think for your application, this would probably do. And what I would do in the front area here, uh, I just kind of want to zoom out. Um, is I would probably use a couple of those, but I would kind of try and stagger them in between where I have some of my up lights. So for example, over here, if I have an accent light and an accent light here, I would tend to want to put a path light kind of in the middle here, kind of one on the corner over here, and the same thing, kind of one on the corner. Then I've got my two up lights here. So I have another one here kind of over here and then you just have maybe two more around this edge um, that give you a nice level of low uh, lighting and then you've got the house backlit up above and even though you have some of these shrubs and stuff um, in the back sometimes I like throwing a wash light on them but it's nice to have that contrast between backlighting the house and then some lower level lighting and those path lights that I just showed you the nice thing is that they do have um, they do cast the light 360 degrees around so they kind of spread it back into the the garden beds um, and I think my favorite thing about those path lights is you don't see the light source which is real key with lighting you don't want to see the light source you just want to see the effect and a lot of people will use path lights where it's just this big glare um, and it just takes away from everything because it looks like uh, it looks like those beacons that line a runway uh, when you're trying to land a plane and that's not what you're trying to do you want very subtle lighting in the front there so that's what I would do with I mean, one two uh, three, four, five, six, maybe seven path lights around here. And then you might want to put one on just on the other side here just to balance out this front section. And then over on this area, uh, we've got this backlit, but this is where I might throw on these two larger shrubs. I might just throw one of those wash lights in front that kind of highlight this a little bit. Again, um, you're just getting different degrees, different depths, different heights of light, which is always a nice balance. And then the evergreen, if possible, depending on how much room here is here. Uh, the only thing with evergreens is you usually have to bring that light quite a bit back so that those bottom branches don't suck up all the light. Um, but if you can get an up light kind of back in here that just kind of highlights this, that would be a nice balance to the front of the house here. Um, if I move around on this side, I mean, this would be real simple where I would just have an up light. Uh, right on this tree here kind of at the base and, and just keep in mind your viewing angle um, I don't like to always put all the lights just in front of the trees I like to spread that viewing angle around sometimes so that um, that if you're looking at from this corner then this tree kind of stands out a little bit more whereas <coughs> if you're on this side of the house and the lights just in the front it's not the same effect whereas if you kind of get it on this corner it kind of rounds out the viewing angle of uh, the entire house 
Um, I something else I like doing, especially uh, if you have something like this, and it's just a, a matter of you know if you're planning on doing lights in the back and stuff too. Um, yeah, so there's some stuff. Uh, it's you might need a separate transformer. You might have to run wire around the house, but I like using those um, brighter lights that we used on the front of the house and kind of highlighting the chimney area. Um, I like maybe putting two of those up lights on here because it really stands out, and especially because it's a, such a tall structure. I think that always looks really nice. And then just using some standard up lights in front of these two hedges. Um, you don't have to light every single one, but I think if you kind of put one in between that highlights it and one in between there that highlights it again it just finishes out that complete viewing angle um, and then you could follow that same theme that you kind of did over here is if you wanted to stagger those path lights in between where you have the up lights so again maybe a path light here maybe one in the middle of the chimney maybe one over here and then maybe you throw uh, some on both edges of, um, of these hedges where, while you have those uplets so Hopefully that gives you some ideas. Um, you know, you can always go and play around on the website with some different options and stuff. And uh, we can help recommend a wiring kit, transforming kit, all that kind of stuff. It's something you want to do yourself. Um, it is uh, a lot easier than you think. The toughest thing is coming up with the designs. And that's why we do these consultations because it kind of helps you with that. Um, but if you have any questions on anything or want us to put a kit together for you that you can install yourself, let me know and we'd be happy to help you with that. I just want to show you an example of how to go and wire your transformer now. So anytime you're getting a good stainless steel transformer, you're going to have one of two options. You're going to have um, usually a 15 volt tap or a 12 volt tap and a common tap on the other side. And with your wire, one of the questions I get asked all the time, does polarity matter? Uh, do I need to make sure that this wire is consistent through all my lights? And the answer is no. As long as one of these is going into your common tap and one is going into your 15 volt tap, Really, that's all that matters, and it's pretty simple. There's usually some screws just on the top that you need to loosen. You just tighten your wires, slap them in, and then screw down on your common tap, and then you do the same on your 15 volt tap. Now, a question I get asked all the time is, can I run multiple lines out of a single transformer? And the real simple answer is yes. Usually on a good stainless steel transformer like this, the terminals are big enough to fit at least two, if not three different wires. So what you do now is say you have another line that you're running out to another location. This is running out to say your front yard. This is running to your backyard. All you have to do is basically same thing. Open that up again. I just twist my wires together and I'll insert those into my common tap. You might have to back off the screws a little bit, push them in and then tighten that down. And then you have your other wires, same thing. Again, polarity does not matter when you're doing a system like this. I'm gonna open that up a little bit more so I can fit those in. I'm gonna push those in, I'm gonna tighten that down and there we go now we have a line going to the front and a line going to the back so you can actually fit up to three sets of wires and these and sometimes you'll get a transformer that has multiple taps well you can just use the different taps as opposed to having to fit all your wires in the 15 volt and to the common tap i'll point out a couple things in a transformer pretty standard there's usually an on off switch down here this is how you just manually turn your transformer on or off and if there's a fault out in the system, what you're usually gonna find is it's gonna trip this and it's gonna turn that off. So that's a good way to determine if you have a fault out in the system. Most of these transformers will come with this photo cell option. This is if you wanted to put a photo eye, you can. If you're not using a photo eye, leave this plugged in because if this is out, your transformer is not gonna work. It's gonna trip every single time. So you need to leave that little plug in there if you're not gonna add a photo eye. And then this little plug in here is this is for your timer. So whatever your timer is, whether it's a photo eye or some kind of astronomical one, basically all you do is you plug it into this outlet right here, and then this end will plug into whatever your timer is. So for example, in our case, we use these uh, Weon Wi-Fi timers a lot. So you can do this two ways. One, 
you can actually plug this right in here and then you plug your transformer wire into the outlet in the bottom and then you just put that inside your transformer box or the other option you can do if you're using one of these Wi-Fi options is just keep that plugged in <clears throat> take your timer and then your plug that actually comes from your transformer that you're going to go and plug into your GFCI receptacle you're going to take that and you're going to plug it into your Wi-Fi timer and then you're going to go plug the Wi-Fi timer into the wall and you're going to operate it that way so that's how you go do it there's two ways to go and do it it just depends whether you want to have this outside or whether you want to have it inside but basically all you do is remove that plug and plug it in to there other than that there's not a whole lot more inside these transformers hey guys i really hope you enjoyed that video presentation with some great tips and tools on how to go and properly and effectively light up your landscape and be sure if you want your own free consultation video just send me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca with a few pictures of your property and we'll get back to you with some really cool ideas and ways to go and effectively light your property and be sure to watch the videos after this one for more tips on how to install landscape lighting as well as how to light up your landscape the best way possible